hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel today we are going to discuss some of the questions that were asked from morphological section in UGC net uh, 2021 november 2021 the first question is the forms such as cut 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 or put 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 for v1 v2 v3 exemplify means we have to say which of the morphological process these examples refer to look in english language verbs have three forms on the basis of their tense and they change their form with the change in tense here is the example we have v1 present form of go v2 past form of went or past form of go that is went and v3 that is gone past form of go so every verb has three forms go went gone and they change their form on the basis of their tense but in the given example cut 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 or put 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 this cut or put as v1 v2 v3 doesn't change its form you can see here cut is v1 cut is v2 and cut is v3 same goes with put they do not change their form but they do change their tense which also means that their meaning changes depending on their tense they are used in so they have meaning but they don't have form so the option number a will follow meaning but no form because they don't have form they don't change their form as per the tense but they have meaning coming to the question second in inflectional or derivational morphology see let us first understand a little bit about inflectional and derivational morphology we have inflectional affixes which do not change parts of speech for example you have this word here work it's a verb and when we add this s is uh, inflectional marker it doesn't change its parts of speech we have work as verb and works is also a verb work used with plural subject and works used with singular subject so this is an inflectional affects it doesn't change parts of speech and on the other hand we have derivational effects derivational effects change the parts of speech for example you have work is verb but when you add er to this work it becomes worker someone who does the work it becomes noun so here is a change from verb to noun so an effects which changes the parts of speech of a of a word is called as derivational effects so coming back to the question here we have options the option number first is er in worker is a derivational suffix this is correct because work is a verb and when we add er it becomes worker means a noun so it is a derivative suffix because the parts of speech of the word has been changed option number second s in this machine works well is inflectional suffix let us see this s in works work is a verb and when we add s to this verb it becomes works and it is still a verb it doesn't change its category so here in this machine works well is inflection of suffix it is also correct option number c s in teachers transit house is a derivation of suffix well this option is incorrect because teachers here it is not an inflectional suffix but it is a clitic this teachers is not the plural form of teacher it is a possessive marker you can see the apostrophe above this s so it is not a derivational marker it's a clitic so uh, option number c is incorrect and option number d ing in this is a working lunch is a derivation of suffix yes because we have work a verb when we add ing to this it becomes 
it becomes working lunch. This working becomes an adjective, working lunch. It modifies this noun, lunch, working lunch. So it is a directional suffix because it changed the parts of speech. So option number A, B and D. A, B and D. Option number 3 is the correct option. Question number 3 says make the following. Okay, let us first understand the basic concept is in this question. Endocentric compound. Endocentric compound is a compound word in which one part acts as head and carries the meaning and, and other act as modifier. See, left-headed endocentric compound means the head should be on the left side. Okay, we have option number D here. Attorney General. Attorney General means attorney means an advisor, a legal advisor. Attorney General. The head is attorney on the left side of the compound word. So, the option number D. Option number second says right headed endocentric compound means the head should be on the right side. Okay. Here is the option, option number B. Walking stick. Walking stick is a type of stick that we used uh, for walking. Means the head is on the right side of the word. The stick walking act is a modifier. A stick which is used for walking. Option number third is copulative compound. Copulative compound in which both of the parts act as heads. They share same status. Which one? Bluetooth is not the option. Boyfriend. Copulative is like this. Boyfriend. Because boyfriend. Boyfriend is also a friend as well as a boy. Now the last part is exocentric compound. Exocentric compound means neither of the parts act as head. Means it lacks the head. So it also means that the meaning of the word lies outside the word. Like this, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is neither something like blue nor is it something like tooth. Bluetooth is a wireless instrument used for transferring files or listening to music. It is. It can be a software as well as hardware. So, this. Okay, moving on to the question number four. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion and other one is labeled as reason. Okay, the assertion is. The English word biotech is an example of blending process and we know the blending process it is a process in which parts of two different words are joined together to form a new word so yes biotech are parts of two different words combined together and the reason is the the English word biology and technology are blended to give biotech this is also uh, correct because bio from biology and tech from technology combined together form the word bio biotech. So option number first will follow. Question number five reads a clitic which is the reduced form of a free morpheme. Yes, first uh, a clitic is the reduced form of free morpheme because we have examples here question number five is is a free morpheme and we have reduced it to s what is so it is the reduced form of free morpheme we does not have to occur at a place where it is non reduced form could occur this part is incorrect because there are no restrictions uh, for acolytic to occur you can see what's your name here is the non-reduced form a free morpheme and we have reduced this form as per our own choice and it becomes what is your name so there are no restrictions for acolytics it can occur anywhere statement number two acolytic is a type of obligatory bound morpheme which is generally distinguished from an effect on the basis of its function. Yes, that is also correct because uh, because an effect has 
phonological or morphological function where is a clitic has synthetic function and example is given here so the option number b will follow statement one is incorrect but this statement second is correct the assertion is borrowed words are usually remodeled to fit the phonological or morphological structure of the borrowing language this is true because uh, every word has its own phonological structure and when we borrow a word into a language the word goes through the process of nativization to fit into the phonological structure of the recipient language here is an example for question number six we have this word pneumonia it's a scientific term you can see here this pn cluster consonant cluster pn is not allowed in english language that is why we drop this p sound and pronounce it as pneumonia so when we borrow this word into english language we have to nativize it we have to remodel it as per the phonological structure of our own language so yes the reason is the strongest evidence for a loan word identification and the direction of borrowing comes from the phonological criteria yes the strongest criteria for such things is the phonological criteria because every language has a unique phonological structure it is on the basis of phonological structure that is the sound pattern that we decide if a word belongs to a particular language or not and here is the example pneumonia again it is on the basis of phonological structure that we decided to drop the p sound in pneumonia so option number a will follow Question number seven. Once an inflectional affix is added to a word, then the rule is: first comes the derivational affix, then comes the inflectional affix. And the example is here: worker. Work is a verb. Er is a derivational affix, and so. It's an inflectional affix. So the rule is first derivational, then inflectional affix. Coming back to the question, the question says once an inflectional affix is added to a word, then the word can further be derived. Option number A is incorrect because now this word cannot be derived because the rule is the inflectional affix and is the process of affixation. Option number B says it becomes easy to recognize the root word. Again, option B is also incorrect because when we add an inflectional affix, there are possibilities that we might have added a number of derivation affix before it. It will not become easy for us to recognize the root word because of those derivation affix added before the inflection affix. Option number C: The further derivation of word is impossible. That is the correct option because we cannot derive the word now because the inflectional affix is added. And option number D: It finalizes the concatenation process of the word. Yes, this is also correct because once we add the inflectional affix, the affixation process comes to end. Okay. Question number eight: The word "deadline" is an example of compound noun in English, which can be classified as deadline. Which type of compound is it? It is an exocentric compound because deadline is neither something like dead nor is it a line. It is the last day to complete a task. So the meaning lies outside the word. So we know. A compound word in which the meaning lies outside the word is called exocentric compound. 